So I imagine everybody that has clicked on this video or watches this channel has at some point or another thought about buying a used graphics card. And I want to pose the question, where exactly is the best bracket, price bracket, to purchase a graphics card and what performance can you expect within that price bracket? So without further ado, let me get into how I did it. So first off, I do not claim to be the most scientific of experimenters. This is more of a um, loose overview that can come in handy, but I would not hold it under a microscope and say, ah, you said this, but it is actually that. My results are close enough to accurate that I feel like they are perfectly acceptable sharing them with you. So let me go over my testing methodology so that you know exactly what I did and you can recreate it if you feel Oh, so inclined to. So I fell into the position that I had a bunch of different graphics cards along the spectrum of used graphics card prices, going from like $40 at the low end and $200 at the high end of the different graphics cards I had. So what I did is I found settings in five different games, and I've tried to pick these games to not lean towards one side or the other, AMD or Nvidia, um, and I picked these five games found settings that all the cards could actually run, you know, with VRAM limitations and things of that nature. And then I ran them all, same settings, through the same paces, through the same test, you know, run everything stock so there weren't overclocking, skewing the performance numbers, and then average those all out into an average score. And so, you know, let's say you got, you know, 100 frames in this and 120 frames in that, you know, it averaged out to be like 110 frames. So we average out the score from all five games under controlled variable settings, and then divided the price that I had allotted for the card by the frame average, and then ended up with a score called frames per dollar. And basically what that means is every dollar that I pay towards this graphics card, these are how many frames in my game I'm getting in return. And I understand that this number, and I'm also gonna try and emphasize that this number is not the be all end all of what card you should buy. You could have a card in the lowest bracket, let's say a 20 or $40 card, getting a graphics card alone for $40 is relatively cheap. So if it can perform in any way, shape or form, then it's going to look a lot better just due to the fact that it is so low in cost. Also, you have the, the term that everyone loves to throw around, diminishing returns. Obviously, the higher up in the technology tree you go, the less performance you're getting per dollar spent. But there's that sweet spot where you're putting down enough money to get the benefit of a great experience. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. And we'll go into the graphs and the details that I have to try and represent why my conclusion is what it is. So another step I must go over before I go into the actual graphs is how I came up with the prices for the cards. Um, it is not accurate. Obviously, used cards can vary in price drastically, whether you get a good deal or a bad deal or new cards come out and it moves the used card market around a fair bit. Also, just the age of the video, you know, you might be looking at this three, four, five months from now and the prices of the cards may have gone up or down or anything of that nature. But I went to eBay and I checked the average price. Obviously, it's all kind of relative, but it is a price that I saw them going for on a regular basis. So let me introduce you to our contenders, as I could say, the uh, different cards that I tested. Our lowest budget tier card is the R9 280 at $40. And a step up from that, we have the RX 470 for around 60 to 70, but we'll go with $70. And the next tier above that is the GTX 1050 Ti, which is $100. And then a rather odd choice, but one that I had on hand, so I thought I would test anyway, is the R9 Fury, which again comes in at around $100. And then slightly above that, we have the RX 5 580 at $125. And then finally, our highest card. By all means, it's not the most powerful card you can find on the market right now or even on the used market, but again, it's just the most powerful card I had at the time and is a good representation of higher end cards that you might buy in the used market. And that is the GTX 1070, which ended up being around $200. So before actually running the numbers, I was very inclined to believe that the RX 470 was probably going to be the card that I selected as the best example of price to performance that you wanted to go for. I knew that the cards on the lower end of the spectrum were going to look fairly good, but again, it's very, it's very important to stress that they are not built or they are no longer capable 
of a good like 1080p medium settings experience and also when it comes into computer flipping and selling it to other people you always want them to have a good experience so you don't want to sell them a 40 dollars card and jack up the price i would much rather sell them a decent card at a relatively average price so i went in believing that the 470 was probably going to be my best bet and i think the 1070 would relatively stay within the margin of like acceptability and then everything else would kind of just go along the trend line because the one thing that I've noticed with used graphics cards, their performance is shown basically by the price you're paying for. It's very rare that you are overpaying for a used card if you're paying the average price for it, of course. If you're paying a bad deal for it, then of course you're gonna overpay. But if you're paying what they averagely go for, then generally it lines up pretty well with the amount of performance you'll get. So now with all of that rambling out of the way, I'll actually go into the numbers and the details that I have Actually, before I get into that, I'll mention that if you have a card that you're looking to buying, or you've recently bought a card and you're just curious, I'm going to provide all the tools to help you compare your deal and your card and your frames per dollar to mine. I'm going to provide all the settings and all that stuff at the end of the video. So if you're interested in that, stick around and you can do that as well. So this is the first graph, and you can basically summarize the conclusion of this experiment with this graph, but it is not very visually clear but it's interesting to look at nonetheless because it shows you where the different FPSs per game lined up by the different colors, the relative price, and the relative average performance. And I don't want to talk about this one too much. I just thought it would be interesting to show just due to the fact that it shows all the information we're going over. Now, the second and the third graph are where I think the conclusion is very obvious, and I'll get into a bit more detail about where I personally end up with the conclusion with these results. The second and third graph are basically the same graph, just simplified one over the other. The second one shows the average frames that each card got during all of its testing and the price right above it to show where the relative performance kind of stacked up. And the third graph is showing how many frames per dollar you are getting with each card. And of course, the lower you go in price, the higher the bar looks and the better it looks because 0.92 frames per dollar looks a hell of a lot better than 0.5 frames per dollar. But there's a ton of caveats that I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will try and express in the best way I possibly can. Uh, the 470 and the R9 Fury look to be the best deals in my opinion. The 1050 Ti is probably the most interesting result out of all of them. It actually shocked me so much that I looked up other people's benchmarks of the 1050 Ti to make sure my numbers weren't wrong, like my card wasn't messed up in any particular way because these 1050 Ti's are still holding their value for whatever reason. It could be because, you know, they're low wattage or, you know, some of them are low profile or they're just recommended by tech YouTubers and things of that nature quite a fair bit. I don't really know the secret of why they're holding their value so much, but their performance to their value is just horribly scaled. And so it throws off a little neat trend line that we had going on with this graph and it just, it looks abysmal. So again, this might be a useful tool if you're going to look at buying a card, you have no idea the performance you're gonna get out of it, or you can kind of roughly guess the performance you can get out of it, and then you can compare it to this graph. Of course, it would help if you had the card on hand so you can actually test it, but that's a whole other conversation to have. So then you may be asking, was my hypothesis correct? Is the RX 470 the best price to performance card that you can find nowadays? Is it my recommendation? And I'm going with a very hesitant yes. I came to the quick conclusion that the lower cards, $40, $50, unless you're just building a light rig and that's all that's required is a low end card to keep like World of Warcraft going. It is not a great deal. I would not focus on buying them. I wouldn't really try and do flips off of them just due to the fact that they're getting almost close to that like old console performance, which is nothing to brag about if you're getting into the PC master race, as most people say. And then you get up into the scales, you're hitting the 470s and the R9 Fury and the 580. And generally I think that would be the sweet spot. Anywhere between 70 to $100 is where you're spending less than a new card. You're getting the performance that most people find acceptable nowadays and you're not losing that horrible value. You're not going into the diminishing turn, diminishing return bracket of the price. But another caveat, is let's say that you are a bit pickier, you're kind of a computer snob and you need such and such performance to, you know, feel better at night and hit that pillow and have a good night's sleep. Then obviously buying a 1070, a 1080 Ti or whatever you actually desire to get the performance you want 
the frames per dollar don't really matter to you because you have this goal in mind, you have these specs and these frame rates that you want and you don't really want to compromise on them. So you're just going to have to pay what the market provides to get that performance. So again, it's basically where I thought it would end up. I thought all the cards landed basically where they would, except for the 1050 Ti, which now that I know, I probably will never throw in a rig. I'll probably sell them and purchase a different card because for people that are not hyper computer literate, they really don't care if it's a 1050 Ti or an RX 470. As long as their games run smooth and nothing breaks, they'll probably never even know. So I thought that was an interesting find. If nothing else was, that the 1050 Ti is drastically outperformed by a lot of other cards in its price category. So finally, I told you I would provide the tools necessary to test your cards against the other cards that I have. Um, I will provide all of the settings that I use for all of the games. I have little crappily recorded like early 2000s Call of Duty montage footage that will show you the different settings I used and the different tests I ran. And then you can take your card run the same games to the same settings, get the average score of the settings. And of course, if you don't have every game on the list, you can do two or three and still get the average score and it would still be close. It won't be perfect, but close enough is generally where I want to land with this kind of research. And then of course, you would take that average uh, frame rate that you got from testing all the games and divide it by the amount of money that you spent for the card. And then you would come up with your ultimate uh, score of how many frames you got per dollar spent. So with that conclusion, that's about all the video. And I was very, very interested in figuring this out. I love doing little scientific experiments, things to boost my knowledge about computers and graphics cards and computer flipping and all that wonderful stuff that keeps my brain busy every single day. So if you have questions or you have comments, if you learned something, hit that like button. If you thought that this test was ludicrously stupid and it wasn't scientifically controlled and these results mean nothing, then hit me with that dislike button and tell me what I can do better. I probably won't listen to you, but at least I'll cry about it at night. So without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see different videos of mine and you think that these are interesting topics to cover. And I hope you have a wonderful day.